we're back here in the tackle room. And today we're talking about how you've got the right gear, you have the right lures, and you've even found the right water where those pre-spawn bass are located. But you're still having problems catching any bass. Well, good news. Chances are it's a very simple and easy fix. Stick around. We're going to talk all about it. Oh, got him. That's another good one. That's another good one. That's another good one. <sighs> and here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as a lot of you have been telling me, the pre-spawn is moving north. In Alabama, I'm hearing about it. In Arkansas, in Texas, in Louisiana, and even in Missouri and Tennessee, I'm hearing that the pre-spawn is beginning to kick off in a lot of those areas. As we begin to warm up from south to north, obviously, the pre-spawn is only going to get more active from here. That means really good bass fishing. The long winter wait is finally over. Now, the thing that I'm also hearing about is even though we've located the fish, and a lot of anglers have located the fish, and they can see them busting, and they know those fish are there, they're not catching anything. Well, it comes down to one simple reason that I have been hearing about and that I've noted, and that is you're going at the wrong time of day. Sounds strange, doesn't it? It can be that simple. Well, a lot of times it can really actually be that simple. Let me explain. See, as the winter gives way to spring and the water warms up, well, you have to give that water time to heat up during the day. In the summertime, even in the spring and in the fall, we don't have to worry about that so much. In the winter, it's essentially a moot point most of the time. But in the pre-spawn, it's actually very important, if not necessary, to go more towards that midday time. Now, that doesn't mean you can't catch bass early in the morning or even at night. But your chances of finding those really good active pockets of bass those bass that we've been talking about, you know, you go out to the lake, right? Like we can see here on Google Earth, you see these traditional spawning pockets that the bass are using every single year. This is what they're using to spawn in. Every angler in the area knows it. Every angler in the area during the spawn will be fishing these pockets. However, in the pre-spawn, those fish will be further off. They're going to be back away from those pockets more near the, you know, more near the main lake portion, you know, and they're going to be looking for structure and cover to relate to while they're ambushing and chasing their preferred bait. The three things that I've noticed in my area that those bass are chasing, craw, bluegill, and shad, or shiner. They're kind of interchangeable around here because they are very similar on the big lake. We've got threadfin shad, which are the smaller ones, and then we've got regular common shiners. You know, we've got both in about equal amounts, and those are things that the bass are feeding up on. Now, what they're feeding up on from day to day changes, so it always pays to have, so, you know, a little bit of everything. I like to work all three different layers of the water column top, middle, and bottom. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But as I was saying, fishing later on in the day. Why is that so important, especially in the late winter and in the pre-spawn? Well, we've got those big sow females, you know, they're really bulking up. They're really wanting to, you know, gestate those eggs. They're really you know, they've got to get them ready because the spawn is coming. So they've got to feed and they've got to get those eggs ready. And they need two things for that. They've got to have warmth and they've got to have energy. Now, 
lower water temperatures are not going to stop the pre-spawn and the spawn from happening. Now our water temperatures are roughly 10 degrees cooler in some spots than it is normally for this time of year. And I'll be honest, that really so far from what I've seen has affected nothing. The pre-spawn is still happening, but it only accentuates what I'm talking about even more. Every time I go out to the lake, the boat ramp is already full. And I'm not getting out to the lake till about 10.30 or 11 o'clock. And I'm fishing around that midday time because I want that maximum sun exposure. I want the most amount of sun hitting the water as I can. And even on a cloudy day, even on a cloudy day, this applies because of what's known as the blanket philosophy. It's something weathermen learn about, weathermen teach about, and that is cloud cover actually holds in heat. That's why on a cloudy night in the north, it's actually warmer than it is on a clear night where you get something called radioactive cooling. Radioactive cooling, you know, there's no cloud cover to hold that heat in, and it just radiates off into outer space. Those are the coldest nights. Anybody who lives north of the Mason-Dixon line can tell you that. And being from Chicago originally, I can tell you that on those cold, starry nights, those nights are crisp and cold without any cloud cover. So during the day, those clouds are going to keep the heat in. So even as the sun might be behind those clouds, it's still going to have a heating effect. It's still going to warm up as the day goes on. You're not going to stop it. And those fish are going to absorb that heat, and they're only going to get more active. Now remember, they want to feed, they're going to try to feed. So you can still catch fish in the morning, you can still catch fish at night. But the longer you wait during the day, the more you wait for the sun to fully bring the lake up to the temperature for that day, the better your chances are going to be. And as someone who prefers to fish that midday area, even in the summertime, even in the summer, I find that I get the most bites, the best bites, the most aggressive bites during the middle of the day. So what am I working with? What are some of the baits that I'm using, some of the baits and presentations that I'm using to work those areas? Well, obviously, let's start at the bottom. You know, I like bottom bouncing techniques. I talked about working all three areas of the water column, the bottom, the middle, and the top. For the bottom area, well, I'm working this jig. And this is on my Louis Pro SB. This is that skipping reel, right? I mean, it only holds about 40 yards worth of line on it. And I've got 12 pound fluorocarbon on here. But this is what I'm using right now because those bass are up shallow. They are right up by the bank. So I'm not even talking about zone one or zone two. This is all zone three fishing for the most part. And I'm making skips and I'm making pitches off of points uh, by laydowns, you know, looking for structure and cover right in the mouths of those spawning pockets. As, it, as they adjacent to the main lake, that's where I'm starting. And, you know, I'm having a lot of success. And as we get closer and closer to the spawn, those fish will gradually be moving further and further and back. And, you know, eventually you'll see more and more buck males with the red lipstick and the bloody tails. So this is what I'm generally working with whenever I start from the bottom. If I'm starting with the bottom bouncing technique, I've got cleaner, calmer conditions, and I'm only seeing isolated jumps here and there. I'm not seeing, you know, the bass broil and roll on busting shad. This is what I'm going to be starting with. I'm going to be using a jig. You know, we've talked about how this jig with the good old, you know, stick bait trailer, or half a stick bait trailer, how this has actually been great for me. And under the right conditions, obviously, you know, this is going to be what I start out with and what I've caught so many bass with this year and in years past. Like I've said before, and I'll put a link down in the description, there is a video where I talk about using a Bitsy Bug and a half a stick bait trailer in the pre-spawn and the spawn. It's my secret weapon. I've been doing it for years. But as I said, this is going to be where I'm starting based on the activity that I see. Now, another point, another place that I like to go is the middle, right? We want to work all three phases of the water column. And what am I doing? Well, I've got a fluke. I've got a soft plastic jerk bait. You guys have seen me work this. You guys have seen me catch fish on this. Now, 
the wind may be a little bit up, you know, there might be just a little bit more current going. They might be a little bit later in the day, you might see signs of the bass busting up on that bait, you know, as it rolls across the water. We all know what it looks like when those bass are actually busting on schools of bait as opposed to just one bass popping up out of the water. I like to throw this in there and a lot of times I'll pull a fish out, a nice bass out. That's one of the things about the pre-spawn. So this is what I'm using to work the middle of the water collar. I've seen guys actually doing things like a drop shot. That's another good way to go in the middle of the water collar. You know, a weightless wacky rig um, is another good way to do that. So those are some of the things that I'm working with. This has been the biggest producer for me so far is just a white, clean, soft plastic jerkbait. And lastly, well, we've got one of the best types of baits, the most fun type of bait to work with, and that's topwater. And I've got this Yozuri walking bait. And I still don't know what the name of it is. I guess I need to look that up. I just know that it's working great for me. I usually use a head and spook, you know, bone colored head and spook, which is what I used all year last year. But I broke my last one off in the fall and, you know, I went to go get a replacement and they were out of stock. This was the only thing they had. And it works great. It works fine. I love it. It works just as well as that bone color head and spook. So either one, you know, a walking style bait, a Berkeley Jaywalker, you know, that's another one that's going to work very well for you. Anything in that type of range. And I'm adjusting how I work it based on how windy it is because I've worked this in some pretty windy ways. It doesn't have to be slick calm. It can actually be pretty choppy and this will still get bit. This will still work exceptionally well. You just kind of have to change how you work it a little bit, change how you face the waves, how, how you attack those waves because a lot of times those waves can be such that they'll kill the walking action of this. So maybe you might want to change to something like a boy howdy or another type of prop bait, a devil's horse, something, you know, a spin rocket, something along those lines. But I like to use this. I still like to use this because I can get it to work even when it's pretty wavy out there. Now, I don't want to use something like a buzz bait simply because of how this is getting attacked. A lot of times they'll bust on it and they'll slam into it just like those bass like to do. They don't necessarily inhale that bait fish as much as they slam into it. And when they do that, they're stunning, and then they're coming back for the attack. You know, that's when they're coming back to eat. So, like I've talked about before, and like you guys have seen me working on, on the water video, whenever this gets attacked, I stop it. And then it gets bit, and it gets hit time after time after time. So, that's one of the biggest pluses about being able to work this over a buzz bait. If I kill a buzz bait, it's just going to sink. This does not. This floats, which is why I prefer to work that. So that's some of the things that I'm doing and some of the reasoning behind why I'm waiting for that water to heat up. I want to go out later in the day. And I'm also noticing that during the middle of the day, all the way to the afternoon, I have a lot of those places to myself because you get a lot of anglers who are coming out in the morning and they're fishing through the morning and then you know, they've got to get to work, they've got to do something else, or they just wanted to fish in the morning, and they get off of the, you know, they get off of the water, 9, 10 o'clock, it usually begins to clear out pretty good. So, that's another reason why I'm doing it, you know, and if you're on a heavily pressured body of water, like what I fish, you know, there are over a million people in the area in South Mississippi, which I live, and the only lake we've got to fish is 640 acres, it's a place I call the Big Lake. So when I say that place is pressured, it's pressure. It is uber pressure. We've gotten so many people have moved down here. So many people in recent years have, you know, come from other states. They've moved down here. That lake has just swollen with anglers. And it's all we have. The only other lake we really have is Ross Barnett up in Jackson. So that's about two and a half hour drive from here, you know, and, Granted, I like fishing Ross Barnett, but I don't want to go two and a half hours every single day. Anyway, those are some of the reasons why I like fishing during the middle of the day. It really activates those fish. It really gets them turned on. And it can turn your bass fishing day from a struggle and a grind to just catching fish after fish after fish. And isn't that what we all really want? So there you have it. 
you've got all the gear, the lures, and even where those bass are located, you've got all that worked out. But you're not going at the optimal time of day. And that can really hamper your bass fishing. So give it a try. Let that water get warmed up by the sun just a bit, and you'll see how improved your bass fishing can be. Thanks for watching Wilbur Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.